Hello, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs. And here we are with another crafting kit for you, the Lace and Roses Ephemera Holder Crafting Kit. In this video, Alexandra will show you how to craft a beautiful journal and envelope ephemera holder with the principles from this kit. Alexandra has her own YouTube channel called Alexandra M, where you can find tons of amazing crafting tutorials and inspiration. Make sure to check out her channel. By the way, you can also use these printables to follow along with the tutorials of the Mad About Sewing Kit to create a horizontal journal and an accordion folder, etc. There's a link below if you want to check that out. And now let me give you the word to Alexandra. Our envelope ephemera organizer will have six envelope pockets to store different bits and bobs in them. And here are some uh, pages that I chose for creating the envelopes from the Shabby Rose Digital Pad by Victoria Designs. They are absolutely amazing. I really love the combination of pink and blue and cream tones. Let me quickly show you which pages I chose. So as you can see, they are a little bit um, similar, but still very different. And on the back side of these, I printed some of the more um, muted um, designs. So these six pages are printed on both sides. Okay, and as you can see, I have a white border in here that I will have to get rid of. And um, since I'm in the US and the largest uh, size of the paper that I can fit into my printer is a letter sized um, sheet, which is eight and a half by 11. Uh, as soon as I trim the white border, um, obviously the page will be a little bit smaller. And I want to point that out because um, the size of the envelopes that I will be creating for my uh, ephemera organizer is um, dedicated by the size of the final um, paper sheets that I'm going to have as soon as I trim the white border off. And here I trimmed the white border and the size of the page that I have right now is 10 and a half inches by uh, 8 and 1 8. For uh, creating the envelopes, I want to use the envelope punch board. I think that's the easiest way to create the envelopes. And uh, if you look at the measurements on this tool um, and um, will bear in mind the size of the papers that we have right here. Um, I thought that the best and the largest of the envelopes that we um, might have is the one which is three and a half by six inches, the finished uh, size of the envelope. And for creating it, we will need the uh, size of the paper, which is eight by eight inches, which is perfect because on the shorter uh, side, my paper is, as I mentioned, eight and one eighth. So I will go with this option and I will trim all these uh, six papers that I have here to the eight by eight inch um, squares. And here we go. All six of the envelope bases Already, so right now I will just use the punch board in order to create six envelopes. And here are the envelopes now, still not folded, but here they are. If you stack all of the paper sheets that you have just punched together, you will have a nice set of uh, paper layers that I want you please to clip together using any strong clip that you might have in your stash, just like so. We don't want them to move around for the next step. So I will keep them together like this. And um, we have this area here in the center of the envelope base, um, which is marked with the score lines. 
and I thought that it will be nice to have the opening a sort of a window in the envelope so that when you flip the pages of your um, ephemera organizer you can see what's inside of each one of the envelopes. So for uh, creating that opening I went ahead and uh, created a template. Uh, I started with the rectangular piece of uh, white cardstock and then to round the corners you can, of course, go ahead and use the corner rounders, but I actually used a coin. Uh, this is a quarter, U.S. quarter, so I went ahead and used that for rounding the uh, corners of my template. And you will understand why just in a second, but I would really suggest using um, a coin for this step. Um, so next you will take this template and position it somewhere in the center of that area which is um, marked with the score lines and it's kind of hard to see here in camera because of all the uh, reflections of the light on the paper but yeah somewhere here is uh, the place where I want my window to be. So I will now take the pencil and trace the stamplet onto the envelope. Just like that. Now I will take something to protect my surface and I will take the craft knife and the ruler and I will start to cut through all six layers of the envelope bases but I will make sure let me move the clips a little bit so that they don't interfere with the ruler okay so I will cut on the straight lines first and then I will use the coin in order to cut the rounded corners out. Okay, so let me start with one and show you how to do that. So I can see that the corner starts to round somewhere there. So let me mark this for you. So I will cut from one mark to another. You don't have to create the marks. It's just for the purpose of this video so that you could see what exactly I'm doing. So I cut through all six layers of these uh, papers and I will go ahead and do the same on the remaining three sides making sure that I leave the rounded corners um, out for now. So let me cut the uh, three sides and get back to you. Okay, so I have cut the slit in all six paper layers on the longer sides and on the shorter ones and everything is still connected here in the corners. So now I will go ahead and take my coin and use the coin as my guide to cut along the edge of it using my craft knife and the fact that it's a metal coin is great because you can be sure that you will not ruin it, you will not cut it and uh, you will have the same outline, corner outline in all four places. If you are not sure that you cut through all the six layers of the paper sheets that you have on your desk, do not move the coin. When you make the first cut from one point to another along the edge of the coin, keep it tight against the surface and lift the corner of the uh, paper stack to see if everything has been cut through. If not, go ahead and cut again, but do not move the coin till you reach the sixth layer 
here of your paper stack. If you start to move the coin before you cut all the six paper layers, you will not have the same um, the same cut out corner on all of your envelopes and it will just not look nice. And once done, you will be able to easily remove the layers from the stack of your um, envelope bases. Here are six nice uh, paper pieces that you can still use for uh, creating tags or pockets or any other um, embellishments for your journal. So here we have the openings and it's a good time to uh, go ahead and distress the edges of your envelopes if you are going for the vintage look. For uh, sealing the openings in the envelopes I will be using the acetate sheets and here I have six of them. Each one of those measures five and a half by three and a half. And I want to actually mention that the thinner your acetate sheets are, the better for this project specifically. I have these uh, uh, transparency films here and they're only 0 0.1 millimeters thick. And this is perfect for my today's project. For uh, creating shakers, for example, I would use something thicker, but for um, the holder that we are working on today, the thin acetate sheets are just perfect because they will allow your envelopes to be more flexible uh, when you flip the pages, and that's exactly what you need. For attaching the acetate sheets to the a paper envelope. I'm using the Art Glitter Glue and I love it for the fact that it um, adheres the acetate and um, fabric to paper uh, easily. If you don't have this glue, you can go ahead and use the uh, double-sided tape. But an important thing is that you need to apply glue first along the um, outline of the opening that you have created and then I will apply glue along the outer edge of each one of the acetate sheets and since I'm using the art glitter glue I have to work pretty fast because um, as you might know it dries out uh, fast so I will apply the glue around the opening in the envelope and then I will go ahead and apply glue along the outer edge of the acetate sheet and without moving it too much I will just position it on top and drop it down to the working surface and then make sure that I burnish on top and stick both of the pieces down together and here we are easy and fast we have the acetate sheet glued down to the envelope opening and you will repeat this step for all six of the envelopes that you have. Now it's time to fold them and I recommend using your bone folder for burnishing down the score line. Okay so the envelopes are folded now and uh, you can see that there is this a bit of one of the flaps that is um, standing um, too far in my opinion so I want to trim this bit off and for that I will just slide my self-healing mat inside the envelope and use my ruler and the craft knife in order to trim that little triangular piece on all six of the envelopes. If you don't have a little cutting mat, you can just use only a corner of a bigger mat. When you trim that bit off, try to see from which flap exactly from this one or from this one you need to trim that triangular section off because um, the direction of the envelope also matters, of course. 
If you decide to distress the edges of your envelopes for this project, go ahead and do that now for all six of the envelopes that you have prepared. So this is what I did for this envelope, for example. And now when the edges are distressed, I'm ready to seal it closed. I like to use a poking tool rather than a pencil for this step because I just run the poking tool along the edges of this uh, flap and that allows me to see up to where exactly I need to apply glue. You will not see that here because the camera will just not pick those details up, but I can see that line that I have created there with my poking tool and I will apply the glue on these flaps up to that um, up to that line only and I will finish assembling the envelope. I will do the same for all six of them and get back. Our envelopes are ready and we can set them aside for now and keep on working on the uh, binding and the cover for our envelope ephemera organizer. Next we will have to create six hinges that will hold the envelopes in our ephemera organizer. For the hinges I'm using craft cardstock and that's the ones that I have in my stash. Uh, Parkland, I think I purchased it from Hobby Lobby. You will need to create six uh, paper pieces from craft cardstock measuring four and a half by three and seven eighths. And then you will have to score them on the long side at one and a half, one and seven eighths, two and a quarter, two and five eighths, and three inches. I already have the score lines uh, marked on this piece that I am going to show you how to fold now. So you will fold it in half first and I cannot even stress enough how important for this step is the use of your bone folder. Don't try to fold it and use your fingers only for uh, pressing on the score lines. We need these hinges to be very flat with the score lines super crisp so please 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 use your bone folders okay so you will fold it first like that to create something that resembles a W letter and then you will also go ahead and fold the uh, remaining score lines and then you will have the letter W that looks like this Okay, so all of your hinges must be the same with the very crisp fold lines and here they are, all six of them, right here. So once you fold the hinges and give them the shape of the letter W, go ahead and wiggle them here and there to make sure that this part of the hinge is very flexible and can be easily folded to the back and to the front. So do the same procedure for all six of your hinges and we will continue. The envelopes will be attached to the hinge on the left hand side and the hinge will go inside the envelope like this, but it will not be on top of the envelope. It will literally be inside the envelope. What I want us to do now is to take one of those hinges and to trim the corner of the folded sections just like that up to the score line there. And I will do this for all six of the hinges. So here are six of our hinges and next what I want us to do is to take, let's start with one of the envelopes. So as I told you, they will be attached to the hinges on the left hand side if you look at them like this, okay? So I will take one, 
I will actually flip them like so, so that it's easy for me, um, a right-handed person, to cut them. So I will put, let me show you once again how I have the envelope on my crafting surface. So I will take the ruler and I will take my craft knife and I will cut off a tiny strip off of that side of the envelope and literally it's just a hair it's just enough to get the opening in the envelope on this side of it and now it will probably be a good idea to go back and distress the edge of the envelope on um, that side where we uh, trimmed off a piece so now when we have all of the envelopes with their openings on the left hand side I will take one of the hinges and I will make sure that I have that trimmed corner facing up and I will I will tell you I uh, um, I think that some of you might want to use score tape on the hinge right here but I prefer using wet glue for this step because I have more um, time to see that I am gluing the envelope down correctly so what I'm doing right now I am applying some liquid glue to the hinge right here up to the score line and that's how it looks so far and then I will slide that hinge inside the envelope and I will make sure that I align the edge of the envelope with the score line of the hinge but I'm not overlapping the score line then I will flip the hinge back and the envelope back and I will once again apply glue to that section of the hinge up to the score line and I will seal my envelope closed on this side as well I will glue it down to the hinge and what that makes it actually creates the same envelope that we had with a dimensional hinge here on the side that will help you to fetch out whatever you might have inside the envelope easier because you can open the envelope wider to slide your hand inside it so that's the way to attach all of the envelopes to their hinges. Once you have that done, you will take each one of the envelopes which is attached to the hinge and put it like this on your scoreboard and score at one inch and at one and a quarter. You will flip it to the back and score in the same places once again. And you might want to apply some pressure on your bone folder when you do this because we have here two layers of craft cardstock and we want to score through both of them. Okay, so you will do this for all six of your envelopes and hinges. Next, you will take one of the envelopes and I like to flip it like that and fold the top layer of cardstock up to the second score line and apply glue on the layer of cardstock underneath but up to that second score line that I have as a guide on my top layer of cardstock. So I apply the glue and then glue both of the pieces down both of the layers of cardstock flip it to the back burnish once again and then I like to fold both of the layers now up to that middle score line and I fold it to both sides to make it more flexible okay so I will do the same for all six of the envelopes that I have and this is how our hinged envelopes will look like right now. You can go ahead and distress these sections of the hinges 
on both sides and we'll continue. Let's set these aside for now and work on the covers. For the covers we will need two pieces of chipboard that measure six and three quarters by four and one eighth. Two of them are the same and two additional pieces that are four and one eighth by one inch. Again, two of them are the same, measure the same. Please don't mind the different color of the chipboard. It is the same thickness but comes from uh, different chipboard batches, I guess. I will be wrapping my cover in fabric and uh, here I have a piece of tea dyed uh, muslin on my desk. Um, I didn't even iron that because I, I think it will be fine. I am still going to use uh, paper for lining the outside and the inside of both of the covers, so that's fine. I will not worry about that right now. Um, to estimate how big a fabric piece needs to be, that will be enough for me to wrap the cover. I will just position both of the chipboard pieces that I'm going to use in one of the corners of the fabric. I'm going to leave about one inch or two and a half centimeters uh, borders at the top and on my right hand side and I also want to have the same borders on the left hand side and at the top so I will just um, oh and yeah and by the way I will need to have about a quarter of an inch so it's about like um, half centimeter space in between two of those pieces and I will go ahead and make a cut in the fabric on this side and also on this side. And now I will go ahead and tear the fabric along that cut and along the cut on the shorter side. And I will take the fraying threads out and that's the piece that I have that I'm going to use for uh, one of my covers. I will do the same now to prepare the same size uh, fabric for the back cover of the ephemera holder. Okay so now I can take I will start with the larger piece and I will use glue stick for the next step. I will take the larger a piece of the chipboard cover and I will apply glue on the back side of it. Now I will just put this on top of the fabric piece that I have, making sure that I have more or less same uh, width of the borders on the three sides in here. I will flip this to the back and without stretching too much I will use my bone folder to make sure that I glue the fabric down to the chipboard nicely. Next I will take, you can either take a template which is a quarter of an inch wide and that's a template that I have right here or if you don't have a template you can also uh, measure that you have a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the chipboard and just sketch a line on the fabric using your pencil. So since I have the template I will go ahead and use that. It is also important that you apply, that you glue down the next chipboard piece straight uh, close to the previous chipboard piece. I will go ahead and apply more glue to the remaining chipboard piece that I have right here and I will glue it down to the fabric next to the previous piece and I think I will have to trim a little bit of fabric on this side so let's see I will trim it and leave about half an inch only on this edge. So let me mark first and then as usual I will just make a little cut in the fabric and tear 
this piece off. Now I need an additional piece of fabric to cover this fold in here. So I have a piece of fabric which is roughly one inch wide and I will trim it down to the height of my cover just like that and I will use my tacky glue or any other liquid glue in order to glue this fabric piece down right here on top of the fold just like so making sure that I dip it inside the fold right here and glue it all the way to the fold first and then gluing the remaining flaps to the chipboard covers and once you have that ready you can go ahead and apply glue along the long edges of the chipboard just like so and gluing them down like this and do the same thing on the opposite side of the cover now I will trim a piece of fabric along the edge of the chipboard not going all the way to the top and trim accordingly from this side make sure that you have sharp scissors for that your paper scissors if they're not very sharp might not work for this step okay so this is what we have and I will do the same on the opposite side of the cover now I will use my tacky glue or any other liquid glue to apply some into those corners and kind of fold them in at an angle just like that making sure that I cover the corners of the chipboard as well and then I will estimate up to where I need to apply glue on the chipboard and I can even draw a guideline for myself in order to do that and I will apply some liquid glue or you can keep on using your glue stick for this as well and I will wrap the short edges of my cover with fabric just like this and I will do the same on the opposite side of the cover and get back to you both of the covers are ready now and I went ahead and distressed the edges with the vintage photo distress ink what I want to do now is uh, I will probably use some stamping on the narrower pieces of the cover and then I will choose designer papers and use uh, the uh, papers of the uh, appropriate size and cover the wider sections of the covers. So here both of the covers are ready. I uh, went ahead and distressed the edges of uh, the covers both on the front and on the inside using the vintage photo distress ink. I also used some tiny script stamp to add a bit more interest uh, on the narrower sections of the cover and now I want to cut uh, two pieces of the uh, paper from the shabby rose paper pack and cover the wider sections of the cover so here are two sheets that I chose to go with I will trim both of them down to four inches by six and five eighths and I will now glue each one of those pieces down to my covers and then stitch all around and get back to you. 
the stitching part is absolutely optional but I just like the look of it okay so the covers are ready and our envelopes are ready as well the next thing that we need are the spacers as I call them that will uh, add to the thickness of the album for the spacers you will need a few pieces of chipboard and I have seven of them seven of them here so every time you um, have let's say six envelopes like in our case you will have one divider more than the envelopes or if you had only three envelopes in your organizer you would need uh, four spacers so these measure three and seven eighths by one inch and they are uh, created with the same chipboard that I used for making the covers the edges of the chipboard will be seen all around so for coloring them you can either go ahead and use distress ink and then just uh, color each one of the edges of those chipboard pieces or you can go ahead and use acrylic paint I will use a gold leafing pen and that's the one that I happen to have right now in my stash I used to have the one from uh, Marvi Marvi Uchida but the problem with these markers is that um, when you stop using them they dry out and you can't revive them in any way at least I didn't find the way to revive them so if you know a certain secret I will be glad to know it so that's a new one that I uh, started for this project and I hope I will go ahead and use it for uh, some following projects as well and I will be able to use all the ink which is inside of it before it dries out and this marker is actually very golden so I really liked it I didn't expect even that quality from this marker I think this one uh, was from we yeah, are memory keepers if I'm not mistaken but it's it's really good so I will now take my time and color the edges of each one of those pieces um, just like that and get back to you here we go I just love the look of it love it really it's it's amazing okay so we will use a variation of the Japanese binding for um, binding our pages and uh, I will use uh, three holes for that uh, so we need to create three holes in each one of those um, separators so for doing that the easiest and the fastest way is to cut a piece of um, simple scrap paper um, to the same size as the spacer to fold it in half along the short side to fold it in half along the long side and then to fold each one of the sections towards the center fold just like that and at the intersection of those lines we'll get three holes evenly spaced which is exactly what we need so right now I will use my crop a dial and punch the holes in the paper piece that I will use as a template for transferring the holes um, to the spacers. I will now go ahead and trace the holes to each one of those spacers and then poke them once again using my crop a dial and get back to you just thought I will show it to you so now when I have the holes sketched on the piece of chipboard I will use my crop a dial to kind of line the opening on the crop a dial with the outline of the hole in there and punch and that way 
all of them will be in the very same spots and they will be perfectly aligned okay here we go all the stack is all the stack is ready now I will take my envelopes and that's the time when you decide if you want them in a certain order okay just like that so now we will take the top envelope and we will take our top separator and we will once again transfer the holes from the separator to the hinge of our envelope and next we will make sure that we stack them nicely together and we align them along the hinges and not the outside edges of the envelopes so I tap them on my working surface to make sure that they are nicely aligned and I will use a clip to hold them together just like so and while I still have the opposite side unclipped I will make sure that I have all the edges straight in there clip it on this side as well and now I will poke I will punch the holes in this whole stack something that I couldn't do in the stack of the chipboards because even for a crocodile it's too much and I'm using the bigger opening for this bigger hole opening in the crocodile I mean okay I can unclip the envelopes and now I will do this so I will take one of the spacers and I will take one of the envelopes with the hinges and I will go ahead and um, apply glue to the let me put this underneath to the spacer and I will glue the envelope on top making sure that I align the hinge and the separator together really nicely just like that and don't don't worry about the holes not being perfectly aligned in there that's that's totally fine some deviations are possible so I will now go ahead and do the same we'll glue the separator on top of the envelope hinge and then we'll glue the envelope hinge on top and keep on going like that so I have only one envelope and one separator left. Now I have one envelope and one divider left. I will go ahead and glue down the last envelope. And I will use the divider as an additional template to transfer the holes to the covers. So look at the stack. Now it's way more comfortable to work with it and it's not falling apart when you um, take it to your hands okay so we have this whole stack in here and you will notice that the uh, stack with the envelopes and the binding is a little bit uh, shorter than the cover so what I want us to do is I want us to take that uh, remaining piece um, that remaining separator and to hold it against one of the covers and make sure that you have even spacing at the top and at the bottom and 
as a matter of fact you can do it on the front side maybe it will be easier to sketch the holes and I just transfer those holes once again to the cover and do the same on the front cover and I can now glue that remaining separator down to the stack of the hinges and envelopes that I have. I'll keep it aside. Now I can poke the holes in the covers using the same size of the opening as I used before. Let's trim the fabric pieces if we need to. I will also need six brads to set on the covers and have something like this. Okay, so the eyelets are set. The whole stack of the envelopes is ready. Uh, you can go ahead and start embellishing your cover right now before you bind everything together but if you don't want to if you still don't know how you want to embellish it that's okay to bind the pages and to embellish the cover later on which is what i will do for the binding i will use this um, natural twine i do not have a brand of it so I absolutely do not know what to tell you but in terms of thickness it is about 1 16th of an inch thick it's quite flexible it consists of um, a few threads as you can obviously see in millimeters it will be about mm, one and a half two millimeters thick and I have these needles which are called doll needles and they are the ones that I have in my stash with the biggest holes so that's what I need I think I will go ahead and use not the largest but maybe the middle sized from this set I don't know how how long the thread should be but I mean it's just twine I think I will go ahead and do um, five lengths just like so that's how I measure okay and then I will you might want to cut this whole group of threads at an angle and start to thread them that way and I think it worked better now okay so how we bind that I will start from the outside of the cover and I'm just holding everything together just like that and I will start from the middle hole from the outside of it I will leave a tail of about I don't know how much do we have here about six inches and I will go through that same hole again wrapping the thread around the spine of my book and then I will go from the back of the cover to the first top hole in there and wrap it around the top of the spine now making sure that I have a uh, um, twine centered in there and then I will go once again through that same top hole from the back to the front and wrap the thread around the edge of the spine there on the left hand side then I will go from the top hole to the central hole again and you will start to feel that the thread goes tighter and tighter 
through those eyelets. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We will go now from the back of the cover through the bottom hole and loop it around the spine and then loop it around the binding again just like that and just make sure that you center the thread in there Okay, that's the time when you want to tight the thread and you can remove the needle so far. Okay, this is what we have on the back. And we can now go ahead and tie, maybe it was too fast. We can now tie a knot in here. I just want to make sure that I go underneath that thread on the spine just so that it's easier for me to pull everything tight together so I will just tie a double knot like that and I think I will use some uh, maybe beads or some dangles i still am not sure on the tails of this twine but i will not cut it uh, down right now i will leave it like that and get back to it later i have here a bunch of uh, ephemera pieces that i cut out of the shabby rose paper collection and i think i can go ahead and start uh, sorting these out in the envelopes so let's say I want to put all of these pieces in here and I need to say that it's a pretty massive stack of different pieces here so I want to show you that our envelopes can really hold quite a few things in them And it is so nice, I can see between the pages, between the envelopes there, that section, that golden section of the um, separators that we covered in um, uh, with the weaving pen. So let me go ahead and put some here. And put some more in here and so on and so forth and when you embellish the inside covers you can choose to either add maybe some pockets and there is this pocket for example which is provided in the paper pack so you only have to cut it out and fold it or you can go ahead and just add some um, embellishments um, straight to the page without adding more um, layers and pockets in there and there is a whole bunch of different little pieces in the pack which are also included like all of those like all of those label styles and there are even more and different you know envelopes and vintage uh, documents and tickets and uh, different words that I have cut here which can be used either for this project or for many many other projects that you might have so for example um, let's try to lay a few pieces here on the cover and see how we might want to embellish this piece right here since we have cut out ephemera in there I thought that maybe scissors could be 
nice to use. And we could add maybe a label in here as well. I am still not sure about the way in which I will embellish this, but I am sure that you have already seen everything in the overview. Yeah, I think this is a very versatile pack and it's just amazing the vintage feel of the Victoria Designs uh, papers. Every time I just so enjoy working with them. Okay, so I think we can do something like that maybe. Well, anyways, it will take me a moment or two uh, to think about it, but as you can see, there are so many options that you can uh, go with, and I am sure you will definitely find something for uh, yourself, which fits your style, and this paper pack will definitely uh, help you uh, create a wonderful project, a wonderful one. Okay, so maybe we will go with something like this. I don't know, but as you can see, I'm just uh, playing around and um, try to give you guys some ideas about the way of embellishing the cover. But it's it's really full of details and you can find anything you want to complete this a beautiful ephemera holder and we will now uh, get down to uh, creating the matching journal for it. In most of the packs by Victoria Designs there are 24 page designs for your journals. So I printed... Oh and by the way the uh, page designs come in the versions for a vertical journal as uh, full pages uh, for a horizontal journal and as a matter of fact I planned at first uh, to make a smaller size journal but then um, after I already printed the pages which uh, were um, suitable for that smaller size journal I decided why not to make a bigger one so you will see uh, that my designer uh, printed pages are smaller than the regular folded letter size page uh, for that exact reason. But you are welcome to go ahead and print the full page designs and um, you will be <laughs> just fine. I mean, the size of the pages here is not even an issue because when we uh, create a journal. I just want to show you a certain technique, another interesting way for uh, creating a spine or for uh, binding your pages. So, for example, in the vintage uh, library tutorial that, by the way, I will uh, link down below, I showed um, the way of um, binding the pages with a little extension to the um, hinge that all the pages were bound to it later on. So in, in this journal that we are working on today, we will bind the pages to the um, to the spine just the regular way. I will use three holes pamphlet stitch and I am sure that most of you are familiar with that. If not, there are lots of other tutorials on YouTube that will help you um, get the gist of this type of binding. So let me give you the measurements for the type of journal that we are working on today. So as I uh, already mentioned, I printed all 24 sheets of the uh, vertical pages uh, from the uh, project pack. And uh, since I wanted to have three signatures, I printed uh, 12 of them once again on uh, both sides. So I have here three signatures and each signature consists of six double-sided uh, printed papers and they are uh, mixed with a variety of other different types of papers that I had in my stash. I really like to do that when I 
uh, create my journals. And of course, the size of my journal will be dedicated by the size of the largest one of the pages. Uh, my uh, folded page, the largest is eight and a half by five and a half. So I have um, compiled three signatures here and I want to put them aside for now and get to the uh, piece that I already kind of started to um, get ready that all of the signatures will be bound to. So this is just um, some craft card stock and it is 65 pounds. The size of this piece is eight and a half by three and a half inches. I scored it on the short side at one inch, one and three eighths, one and three quarters, two and one eighths, and two and a half. What I did next is I marked the um, places for uh, three rows of holes that I plan to have for binding the signatures. So if we, for example, start from this end of the paper piece, the first set of holes will be at one and a half inch from the left uh, top corner. Then the center will be at four and uh, a quarter. And the third set of holes will be at seven inches. When I drew those lines from one um, edge of the cardstock to another, those lines intersected with the uh, score lines and then uh, I was able to uh, poke uh, the holes for uh, binding the signatures. So I hope that makes sense and uh, in terms of measurements everything is clear. The next thing that I did, I uh, prepared a piece of muslin. This is a tea dyed muslin and uh, I already showed you in the uh, uh, earlier part of the tutorial how to tear uh, muslin if you want to have that uh, nice fluffy edge in there. So the piece of muslin that I have here is long enough to cover the face of the cardstock piece and then to be wrapped around it. So I have it a little bit shorter but that's fine. Uh, you can go ahead and make it up to the very edge of uh, one of the folded um, sides of the fabric, that's okay. It can also overlap a little bit, that's not very important. We just want to reinforce that piece and uh, muslin fabric is perfect for that. And um, next I just uh, distressed the top and bottom edges of the cardstock and of the fabric. And I also uh, distressed the uh, fold here. You need to actually poke the holes from the back of this cardstock piece where you uh, drew them, you marked, marked them, and transfer them in that way um, to the uh, side of the cardstock which is covered by fabric. Once you do that, you can go ahead and use your glue stick in order to glue the remaining pieces of fabric to the back of this cardstock piece, which is what I will do right now, just like that. And I am going now to re-poke the holes so that I can once again see them on the back of the binding piece. Here we have the holes visible both from the front and from the back of this piece. So, um, of course, for binding the um, signatures, and poking the holes in the signatures, we will need to use a template too. And the holes on the template should coincide with the ones on the uh, uh, binding. So here I have a template which is eight and a half inches long, just like uh, my signatures. And it is one inch wide folded in the center and uh, just similar to uh, how we poked the holes in the binding. I did the same here on this template. So two of the um, side holes are one and a half inch away from the sides of the cardstock piece and the one in the center is at four and a quarter of an inch. So I will now take one of my 
um, paper stacks for the signatures and I will make sure that the pages are the way I want them to be, that nothing moved or if it moved I can still move it back and position it the way I like. Um, okay, and then I will just take some uh, clips and hold my pages together. Now I'll take my punching cradle, make sure that I um, put them all the way close to uh, one side of the uh, punching cradle so that nothing moves. Take my template, fold, place it in the fold and use the piercing tool in order to poke the holes in all the set of the pages, just like that. And now I'm ready to stitch it to the binding. Just again, make sure that you um, have it facing the right way. I use thick upholstery thread for binding the signatures and I like to take two lengths of the signature with a bit extra in terms of the thread that I will need for binding each one of the signatures uh, to the spine of the book. So I will clip the tail of the thread here and I will start from the middle of the signature and go through the middle hole connected to the binding piece and now I will go from the outside of the binding through the top hole and through the same hole in the signatures just like that and then I will go through the bottom hole in the signatures and through the bottom hole in the binding and then I will go back from the back of the binding through the middle hole in the signatures and I will make sure that I pull the needle out and have the thread on the other side of the thread here that I have in the center and then I can actually pull by the tails of the thread and make sure that my signature is nicely and tightly attached to the binding piece. That's when you can still pull the thread and make the tails even and once you have it all done you can go ahead and pull tight again and tie a double knot and get to the next signature and that way you will have all the signatures attached now just like that all of the signatures are connected to the binding. My journal will be about one and a half inch uh, thick. Now it's time to get to the favorite step of mine in the process of making the journal, creating the cover. And uh, for the cover I will have a rounded uh, flexible spine but I want to create some uh, ridges on that spine too. So let me explain to you how we will do it and um, I have already started to prepare some pieces so um, let me show you what I have here. The base of the spine of our journal, the outer spine of our journal, not the one that we have stitched our signatures to, but the outside one is also done with um, the craft cardstock and the piece that I have here measures eight and five eighths by four and three quarters. On the short side you will score it half an inch away from the left hand and the right hand side of 
um, the paper and the space in between. You should score at every one eighth of an inch. So you will have this folded piece and the central section will naturally start to curve, which is what we are looking for. Then you will, similar to um, how we covered um, this cardstock piece with fabric when we uh, created um, the base for uh, sewing our signatures, you will do the same here. And once again, the fabric piece that you will use has to be long enough to uh, be wrapped around the cardstock piece. Please try to ignore this section, <laughs> this fabric piece that I have here. I wanted to save some time, so I already glued it down partially so that we can just run with the tutorial. Okay, so you will need first to glue this long piece only to the outside of your uh, spine. Okay, and that's when you have to stop. Okay, so as you can see, I already distressed the top and the bottom edges of um, the fabric there, and I also added distress ink on the folds. Okay, so that's good that we did that. I want to reinforce this central section of the spine and just for that I have this narrow piece of fabric that's the same muslin and in my case it's tea dyed because I tea dyed a ton of muslin ahead of time just to have it ready so this piece is as wide as the central section the scored section of the spine so in our case, it is one and three quarters of an inch. This is just one quarter inch wider than the width of the um, binding that our signatures are connected to. Once you uh, cover that central area with another piece of fabric, and I will just use glue stick for that, here we go, it's glued down. Now I can go ahead and glue these uh, remaining pieces of fabric to the inside of my spine. Like that. Try to glue the fabric as, sm as smooth to the cardstock as you can. We are ready to think about the ridges that I was talking about uh, just a little bit earlier. So for that, I have a few pieces here prepared ahead of time, as usual. Well, we want to save time of the tutorial, so that's why I am doing that. But let me explain what I did. So I will have five ridges on the spine, and for that, I have cut five pieces and these are one layer of the same craft cardstock that I am using here for uh, creating the spine. And this piece is about four inches long. Uh, what, is more, what is more important is the width. It is about half an inch wide. And in centimeters that will be about 10 centimeters long and one and 1.4 centimeters wide. And to make the journal go well with the uh, ephemera holder that we previously created, I went ahead and used that same uh, foiling uh, marker and I just colored the outside edges of this uh, paper strip. So I have five of those and they just need to be a little bit shorter than maybe the whole uh, width of the uh, craft cardstock piece that we are going to use for our spine, but definitely about half an inch wider from each side than the uh, actual spine that our journal is going to have. So I thought that this length was optimal. 
Okay, so I have five of those and I will attach one of them at the very top and one of them at the very bottom, one in the center, and then two additional ones will be uh, between uh, each of those pairs. And for attaching these right now, I will go ahead and use my tacky glue. Just some plain tacky glue and I will glue all five of these strips down to the spine right on top of the fabric. It's easier to do it that way while the spine is still flat and you will have a chance to nicely burnish on top of those paper pieces to make sure that they are glued down nicely to the fabric. Just like this. All of them are now glued down to the spine and you might ask what are these pieces for? So these are um, additional strips of craft cardstock and there are two layers this time. Of the cardstock and each one of those two uh, layered strips is wrapped with our good friend tea dyed muslin fabric okay so the uh, length of this strip is also four inches long four inches long just like the uh, previous set of strips that we had but this time it is not half an inch wide but only three eighths of an inch wide so it is again 10 centimeters by one centimeter and I want to glue them down again using the uh, wet glue in the middle of each one of the gold strips just like that like this you might get away with uh, using a strong uh, fabric glue I haven't tried it so uh, you will have to try and tell me how it was but I am going to add uh, stitching right along the edges of the fabric covered strips in there and get back to you and here we go this way i can be sure that the spine is secure and none of these ridges is going anywhere so now we have to uh, find those folds again and just use a ruler and start to fold gently and nicely those side flaps of the spine and do that on both sides I like to find the fold at the bottom and at the top first and then align my ruler with those folds and then just keep on going and then once I have that done I like to kind of shape the spine even more and curve it just a little bit using my using my fingers so that's what I suggest that you do as well or if you have a rolling pin you can shape it on top of that rolling pin too I think that might be a good idea but look at that spine how cool it looks right I, I just love it I think that's uh, the time when you might add some uh, maybe metal embellishments if you want to uh, here so if you want to attach a dangle for example or maybe add some breads I am still not sure if I will add the breads and just to give you an idea I have a spine of another journal that I have created uh, quite a long time ago so I added the uh, breads here to the ridges which are as you can see covered with uh, the fabric but I think adding breads to the spine could look could look nice I might want to do that
here just like that and uh, please pay attention that I positioned the tails of the brads vertically um, on the inside of the spine because I still want to um, preserve the flexibility of the spine. Let's create the front and back covers. So for that I have here two pieces of chipboard and they are eight and five eighths by five and three quarters. This is medium weight chipboard. I have on the back of those guidelines one and a quarter of an inch away from the edge that will be attached to the spine. So I will, with the help of these guidelines, know where exactly I need to glue the spine. And um, that might be a good idea to sketch those right now. Okay, so I will cover each one of the chipboard pieces with fabric. I will apply glue, this kind of glue, to the uh, front of the chipboard piece and I will glue the fabric down to it. I will do the same with this piece and get back to you. Just like that, I want to attach only this edge of the fabric to the chipboard cover and I will do that actually on both of the covers just like so and then get back to you and uh, one important thing is that try if you are using wider um, margins of the fabric try not to make them as wide as one and a quarter of an inch because then you will cover the guideline with the fabric it will be more difficult for you to estimate where exactly to glue the spine like this and now for the front and back I have already cut the papers that I'm going to use so this I'm going to use on the back and this on the front so these both measure eight and a half by five and a half and I distressed the edges. I am gluing the papers down to the covers right now because I want to stitch all around them and uh, if I don't do it now I will not be able to do it at a later stage. You will understand why. Here I stitched around the front and the back cover. You can add your label in case you do that and even stitch around it because it is still possible. It is just one flat piece. So next I will use a strong glue and I will apply it to these flaps of the spine and glue the spine down to each one of the back and front covers along the guideline that I have prepared for that. Don't apply the glue very close to the fold because you will notice that our cover will be actually about one and a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the chipboard and some of that fold on the spine will be visible here like this you can see that some of that fold on the spine is exposed and not covered all the way by the back this is my back cover and that's also why I don't want to cover the spine all the way with the fabric because I like some areas to be glued down um, paper to paper a sort of thing and not fabric to paper so since the edges here of the cardstock are only paper they glue down nicely to the chipboard layer here and now that will be a good idea first of all to press as good as you can here in these areas to make sure that you glue them down nicely and then I like to add clips at least at the top and at the bottom of the covers like that and leave it to dry for at least half an hour before I keep on going and do the same thing for the front cover. 
same thing apply the glue not all the way to the fold about half uh, about quarter of an inch away from it and then i will glue my front cover to the spine and get back to you so here we are the cover now is both of the covers are attached now to the spine and next i will go ahead and use um, tacky glue for wrapping these fabric pieces around the uh, spine and um, the rest of the cover in the back and uh, in the front and then for this fabric flap I will use the uh, glue stick as usual but here only just to make sure that uh, this bit here is uh, glued down nicely, I will use tacky glue. looks right now and although the cover is quite secure at this stage I want to make sure that everything really stays in place so I will just add breads on top of five of these ridges and I will just eyeball where exactly each one of them should be um, somewhere like this I think will be nice quarter of an inch uh, approximately away from uh, the edge of the chipboard piece and I will add the breads and get back to you and the breads that I'm using are quite small but they're just enough to catch all the layers that we uh, created on our cover. So the cover now is ready. Of course it has to be embellished but it will be way easier to embellish the front of the journal once the signatures are attached to it. So here are our signatures and we need to estimate where exactly to glue them to our covers so what I like to do is this I like to put the signatures inside the cover and I'm looking here to make sure that the um, signatures are really centered and then I can either uh, catch it with a clip or just hold uh, everything with my fingers but I think for the purpose of the tutorial maybe using clips will be a better choice okay and now once everything is connected I will take my pencil and I will kind of start to sketch a line in there on the back cover and on the front cover too now I can unclip this and take the signatures out and now I can create a guideline right here sketch it on top of the fabric let's see it is about a 7 8 away from the edge of the chipboard as far as I can see or if we measure from the edge of the cardstock here which is uh, more visible it will be half an inch away so let's do that let's measure half an inch away from the edge of the cardstock that I have here so in centimeters that will be 1.2 centimeters away 
So I will draw that guideline. Here, well, I can, I can see it. It's a little bit difficult here on fabric, but I think we will be good. And same thing on this side. So half an inch away from the edge of the cardstock. Same thing, let's connect those marks. And I will now apply same strong glue to the flaps of the binding, just like this. Make sure that you apply a bit of glue to the area where only the cardstock is exposed. Just like that. And, okay, so here, this should be glued down to my front cover. So let me do that. And you will notice that the signatures are a little bit shorter than the cover which is fine, this is how it was planned. So just make sure that you send to them and you have equal spacing there at the top and at the bottom. So just take your time gluing these down and once again you might want to use some strong clips at least to hold the bottom and the top there in place. And you might want to wait till this flap is fully glued down and dry to the either back or the front cover before you proceed and do the same on the opposite flap and when you do that you might want to tilt the cover slightly to be able to reach um, that guideline that you sketched on the cover. One more thing which is nice to do right now before you glue the second flap down is shaping your spine and squishing it just a little bit to make it more flexible. Okay, so just do that and then glue the second flap down to the cover. While you glue the second flap down use paper clips at the bottom and at the top to keep it in place while you keep on working on the on the central area there and please don't be tempted to fully open your journal while the glue is still drying I am going to leave this to dry for a good couple of hours before I go ahead and open it fully to make sure that it is easy to write in it. Next we will embellish the cover, the front of our journal, and also you can go ahead and add whatever pockets or uh, paper designs you want to the inside of the front and back covers of this journal. I think it is self-explanatory and depending on the size of the journal that you created you can go ahead and measure what should be the size of the paper that you add, add to the uh, covers on the inside, um, on the front and on the back. So I hope you enjoyed and had fun uh, creating this journal. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please check out the rest of the paper packs that Victoria Designs have in their store. And of course, don't forget about the discounts that um, the store has from time to time and especially for this paper pack right now during um, just a couple of days after the release um, there will also be a great discount that you might want to use thank you so much guys for watching and have a great day
I hope you're so inspired now that you can't wait to just start crafting and grab those scissors and the glue and all the rest. If you want to make these projects with the principles of the Lace and Roses kit, you can discover the kit in our shop, the link is below. And I wish you a truly beautiful day. Bye-bye.